Hey guys, Chris here, and for this example, I want to show you how I use primitive shapes um, in Flash uh, for drawing just about anything. Um, this is really where uh, my sort of idea of treating Flash like a ball of clay um, really comes into effect. And it's not so much Flash, it's really working with vectors for me. It's like working with clay where I'm pushing and pulling um, shapes and, and making them do what I want and turning them into something. Uh, that they didn't start off as. So, as you can see, the actual example file that is included with the book contains um, sort of the step-by-step -step process as to how I went uh, and created this tree and then ultimately the little birdhouse that you see here um, that's on the tree trunk itself. So, I want to go through that process. I've um, actually imported the bitmap here. I'm just going to sort of use as reference up in the top left corner. And uh, here's my stage. Right, so first things first, I want to uh, start off, um, this time around I'll, for this example, I'll start off drawing the trunk of the tree. Um, I've got my color here, and I'm going to basically start off with a rectangle. Um, I want to turn off the stroke because I don't want it, so I'm going to click on the stroke swatch, and then click here. And now you can see with that red diagonal line through it, I will not have a stroke on my shape. I can, if I decide I want one later, that's easy enough to add using the ink bottle tool, but for this example, no strokes. We're just going to use flat shapes, okay? So down here, I have snap uh, tool that I'll just demonstrate that later on a little bit as to how that gets used. And um, object drawing mode can be used if you want. For this, I'm not going to use it. Um, there's no real reason as to why um, I don't use it, but sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. For, I'm just going to keep it real simple and uh, just start with the basic shape. So just draw a rectangle. Um, it can be thick or thin, it doesn't really matter. We're going to just manipulate this. So something along this width will work. So now, using the black arrow, which is the selection tool, I can grab a corner and I can push and pull that into anything I want. Now, if I grab in anywhere in between the corner points here along this edge, I can, as you can see, push and pull the edge to make curves. Now, essentially, this is how I'm going to actually build the tree trunk and all of its limbs. So it's very fun and simple to be able to push and pull this tree trunk and shape it into anything we want. We can add, add a little bit of a rounded edge at the bottom here. Would be kind of cool. We can make this pretty thick or thin, exaggerated as much as we want. Can just play around with it. Pretty simple. So this is what I'm going to do. So now that looks pretty good. Let's bring it down a little bit. That's about right. So now the next step is we can do one of two things. I can um, grab the rectangle tool again and create another rectangle. Or if I wanted to, since I already have a basic shape made that looks like a trunk. I can hold down the Option key and just click and drag to duplicate this shape. And now, uh, again, you have many options here. I can just start to push and pull this thing to make another branch coming off of here. I can also temporarily hit the Q key, which is also the free transform tool. And I can scale it. And let's make a branch. Let's get rid of that for now. Coming off the side here. So once I get the rough sizing of the shape, I then might revert back to the selection tool. And once I click and drag, let's get back into this here. We've created kind of a negative shape in the process. Let me back out and show you what I'm doing. I can click and drag. Since this is the same color, once I click anywhere outside of this to deselect it, it will join the other shape and become one massive shape. Um, if we had object drawing selected, then both of these shapes would be contained in, in their own container. And let me show you what, the, what I mean by that. I have um, object drawing mode uh, selected at this point. Right, so now if I click it, it it's not the so much the raw shape, it's actually protected in a, in a sort of container. And I can still manipulate it like a raw shape. And if I go and create another shape with um, object drawing mode selected and manipulate that, here's the main difference between the two, drawing with and without 
object drawing mode on. If I click and drag, you can see if I select them both, they're still two different objects. And because one's overlapping the other doesn't necessarily mean it's going to join the other one like it did over here. Here I click and drag it, it's one piece. It's one object. Here, the object drawing mode has protected both of these um, images, both of these rectangles, or shapes at this point, and um, they retain their independence, so to speak. So that's the that's the object drawing mode right there. Um, so for now, I'm going to stick with this, this original shape that I started creating. Now you'll see in the original image, right about at the very ends of these branches, they just come to a complete point. Well, there's a cool way to, to if you are really particular about uh, making sure you have the least number of vector points happening here in your, in your image, you want to basically join this corner point. Let me actually grab the subselection tool so we can see what I'm talking about. If I blow this up a little bit, zoom in on it, you can actually see these corner points, right? Let me just turn off Snap Tool. Yeah, it's off. You can see these corner points. I want to, if I want to make this come to a perfect point, meaning one vector point right here, the easiest way to do that is grab the Selection Tool and then turn on Snap, that little magnet icon there in your toolbar. Now watch what happens. I'm going to do this slowly. With Snap on, you'll see once I get close to another point, it snaps right there. Ready? I'll do it again. Snap. Boom. All right. So now we we'll grab the subselection tool and just check that. There's one point happening right there now. So it's sort of joined. It combined one point. Uh, it combined both points into a single point. So now I can manipulate that like that. Okay. Hey, we don't need that shape up there because what I'm going to do is to create a few more of these. So make this have a little bit more curve. Exaggerate it a little bit. There we go. Now let's create a few more. So what I'm going to do with the selection tool, start clicking and dragging away from the object, over the object. I'm going to grab a sort of chunk of this thing, hold down the Option key, click and drag, and that selection was just duplicated. Okay, free transform tool. Let's rotate it a little bit, scale it. We've got another branch. Boom. So it's as simple as that, right? piece of cake. When I'm manipulated a little bit more, it's up to you, but feel free to do so. All right, so again, I'm going to start another branch from scratch. I could copy this one over, but I just want to do it again just to show you the process. Okay. Let's bring that to a point. Snap it. Again, just like just like a little ball of clay, right? Yeah, let's bring this one up here. There we go. All right, I'm going to select some of that just to get the process going. I'm going to flip this one. So go to Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal. And let's rotate it a little bit. And when we do it like, let's zoom in here, right? While it's still selected, we can actually use the arrow keys and move it around. Um, what I'm going to do is get it to a point right there. And then let it snap right to it. So let's make sure, yep, magnet tool, snap tool selected. There. Now let's get a couple of smaller branches stemming off of this. Let's modify, transform, and flip this one as well. Maybe scale it down a bit. While it's selected, let's copy it. Command C, Command V. Let's transform this and flip it horizontal. You'll notice I flip things horizontally quite a bit. So I'm going to show you one other cool little trick. You know, let's put it on this branch. Actually, let's flip it back. That's pretty good. Pretty good for now. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm going to do is, what, since I use, um, let me select something here. Since I use Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal a lot, and going to Modify, which is one click, going to Transform, which is another click, and then going to Flip Horizontal, uh, which is another click, 
I like creating a keyboard shortcut for flip horizontal. So while I'm here and thinking about it, why don't I just show you how to do it? So go to flash keyboard shortcuts, right? So, and I'm going to go to drill down. Oh, actually the first thing we want to do is duplicate the current default set of keyboard shortcuts, which is called Adobe standard. Well, so I'm going to click the duplicate set button here and I'll just leave it at Adobe standard copy for now. I could name it anything I want. But that's fine for me. So once it's duplicated, I can now customize this. So I am going to go to transform, just like the same, it follows the same menu system, and go flip horizontal. And here now I want to uh, add uh, a keyboard shortcut. So let's see, I'm going to do command, well, I don't know if I want command F because it's already assigned to find and replace, but you know what? I, I'll remember, uh, maybe I'll try... Let's see if command H is hide. We don't want that. So maybe we'll try for flip horizontal. Uh, you know what? Command F will work for me. I never um, access find re replace as much as I uh, would flip something horizontally. So I'm happy with changing that. Yes, I get that extra warning, but I'm totally fine with it. I'm going to click OK. So now um, instead of going through modify, transform flip horizontal you can see our keyboard shortcuts here I just hit F to hit command F and things will flip horizontally for me which will uh, speed up my workflow quite a bit um, so I'm gonna add one more quick little branch over here like so excellent perfect that works for me and then uh, while it's selected the whole thing is selected here I'm just gonna hit command G and just sort of group it Place it off to the sides to um, so now we can concentrate on our leaves. All right, and it, this is again a very simple basic tree. So um, let's pick that green color. Okay, I'm picking in the fill color and using the eyedropper, and I got my tree color. It's great. Um, you know, for this, let's draw with object drawing mode on. All right, so I'm just going to create just some ovals and make them a little less oval perfect a little less perfect like so that works okay and again with the object selected hold down option click and drag now I hit Q which is the free transform tool and I can manipulate this and change the overall shape and start building upon it let me get this a little let me make this whole thing a little bit bigger we can move you off to the side for now and again, I'm going to hold down my option key, manipulate this using free transform tool again, and let's make some more. I just want to randomize the shape of this. All right, that's not bad. Now this is going to go, obviously, below the, uh, the tree trunk itself. So what I'm going to do is right click over the tree trunk, say uh, go to arrange and say bring to front. Now obviously the scaling is a little bit off so I'm going to hit uh, Q which is the free transform tool and just resize it. And we have the basics for our tree. You can see in our original tree um, we have sort of a stylistic hint of leaves that's easy enough to add. I might manipulate this a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is first now go pick that yellowy color. Okay. And what I'm going to do is double click in here, grab the brush tool, turn on pressure sensitivity, which is indicated by this icon here, use pressure. Uh, I have a Wacom tablet and in 205 installed. That's uh, my sort of go tool go to drawing tool zoom in a little bit maybe get, make the brush a little bit bigger and just go in and I don't need object drawing mode for this so I'm just gonna pepper this with a few little highlights like so and maybe lower I'll make my brush size a little bit smaller just to vary the sizes of everything here make it a little more natural 
All right, that's good enough for this. And do it a few more times on this shape. And over here, get the idea. Okay. So for the most part, that's how I drew the tree. Now with everything selected, I can just group it, uh, hold down the uh, option key again. You can duplicate this, scale it, hit Command F, flip it. And arrange it, send it to the back behind this tree. All of a sudden you got the makings of a, a little bit of a forest going on here. Cool. So that's that's how I made the tree. Now, as far as the um, this house goes, let me grab the finished version. I'm going to create a whole new file here and show show you real quick how I built this. Just by looking at it, I'm just going to use it as reference. But um, let's make a completely different colored version, just for the sake of this example. All right, let's just choose a blue house. I'm going to again create a rectangle. We got to start with something. Um, I do not want this uh, rectangle primitive tool, what this allows me to do is start altering corners and stuff like that using this slider. So let me just delete that. Let me go to the regular rectangle tool. Okay. Here's my raw vector shape. And so what I want to do now is just create kind of like, you know, kind of a funky, not perfectly aligned shape like this. Uh, we want this definitely to come to a point. So there's a couple of ways to do that. One way is to just click and drag and select a section of this and hit delete. Okay, with snap turned on, I can start pushing and pulling this and snapping it and bringing it to a point and continually uh, grabbing edges and corners and, and snapping them up to so that this re you get to the point where it looks like this. So that's one way of doing it. Another way, if I undo all that, another way of doing all this is just bring this down a little bit. Let's hold down the option key again. I love duplicating existing shapes, okay? And bringing these two points together to create this triangle, bring this point to this point, bring that point to that point, and voila. So it's up to you. There's several ways to skin the cat here, so to speak. All right, so. This looks like it has a little bit of perspective to it. So I'm going to just try to model that. So now let's create the back side of this. So what I want to do is mix a slightly darker color. So what I like to do is using the color panel, just use this slider here. Let's get a slightly darker shade of this blue. Again, rectangle is selected and snap to this corner, snap to this corner. Eh, that works. Maybe we can bring this in a little bit. All right, now for the roof. So let's go for a completely different color for the roof. Let's try uh, this orangey color. That'll work for now. Again, let's create maybe a couple of different shapes. It looks like we're going to need at least two, right? So you can see there's a little bit of an overhang here. It's going to cut into this a little bit. So what I might do, that's, this gets a little tricky here, and even though it's still a very simple shape. Here, let's just get push this. Here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this and group it, okay? And we can take this, and we can group that too. Why, why not? So it's going to, we can overlay it over the, the, the blue shapes and, and not and without fear of cutting it in. We could have used object drawing mode for this as well. So I'm going to double click inside this group, get back to this, and here now I'm going to create the roof. 
let it overlap a little bit as you can see it overlaps all right again with snap selected you can snap it to the other shape Now, one tricky thing you want to look at and see how the alignment of this peak and this peak, uh, what well, this peak is directly above this peak, the one below it. This one is not, so we want to make sure perspective-wise it doesn't look right when it's down here. It looks a little off. All right, so that's pretty close. Still feels a little wonky, but we can fix that. I'm going to double click back out here, pull this in a little bit. All right, odd color. Don't like the orange anymore, so I'm going to change that. Let's go with, uh, let's go with a, just a dark blue. There we go. All right, so now for this circle, for the opening of the house. Here, let's group all that together as well. All right, so here, let's just take black and click and hold down on the rectangle tool. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm going to grab the oval tool. And again, no stroke. Uh, why don't we turn on object drawing mode for this? Let's draw straight over this and create the hole. Now we want to add a little bit of depth to that hole, right? Uh, give the illusion that this uh, house has some, you know, is made out of wood and has some sort of thickness to it, right? So we want to create this shape here. It was a very easy way to do that. I'm going to grab the ink bottle tool. If you hold, if you just um, tap the S key on your keyboard, or just click here and grab the ink bottle tool. And now we want a stroke, a, a, some kind of contrasting stroke color. It's just going to be a temporary thing. I'll choose white because it's going to be so it's just easier for you to see. We're going to eventually delete this. So what I want to do is click inside this black symbol. Now let me zoom in. You can see the stroke it created, right? Let me zoom in a little bit more. Now this is all part of this object drawing. Uh, so I want to double click inside it here. So I'm inside this drawing object. And here I can click the stroke, select it, okay? And with the fill shape not selected, just the stroke selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key and hit the left arrow key to sort of jog this stroke over to the left. That's about right. All right, so now this is the area we want to pay attention to. Okay, right there. So let's give this a different color, uh, preferably the, a darker shade of blue, right, than, than, than what's out here. All right, so now go and select, double click this stroke again. It'll just select just the stroke and hit the delete key. All right, now let's back out a little bit and we're done. Voila, it was that simple. At this point, we can still manipulate the shape of this hole. Maybe it's too big, too small. It's all up to you. Done. So let's select the whole thing. You can hit Command G to group it all. Good. And now I'm going to. Uh, hit Command C to copy it. I'm going to go to uh, back to this previous document that has my tree, and let's paste it in. And let's hit the free transform tool. If I hold down Shift, it'll const constrain the proportions here of this object I'm scaling. If we don't like this uh, way over here uh, to the right and facing this way, let's hit Command F, flip it, and put it up here. Rotate it, maybe make it try to work it into this image, and there you go. Maybe maybe each of these trees has the has the same little birdhouse, right? So hold down Option. Let's duplicate it three more times. Scale it a little bit. Flip it. There we go. So. That's how, uh, it's one of the many ways I use Flash for drawing. Um, really not rocket science at all, but uh, it, it's effective. It gets the job done. And uh, I don't know, hope you learned something. Uh, and thanks for watching.